Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. I wanted to make a video response today to an article which came out a couple days ago in the Times where they recommend a hundred books uh, to read this summer. And these are mostly recently published books, so um, good new books. And, and you know, we all love a list. I love looking at a list and, and uh, going through it and seeing which ones I've read or recommendations for books I haven't read. So I thought I'd make a video today going through that list and, and talking through it of which ones I would also recommend, um, maybe a few that I wouldn't recommend so much, uh, but also to get some suggestions from you if you've read any of these books, uh, which ones you would suggest I read next. And it's quite interesting how they've gone through it because they've uh, they've recommended 50 uh, novels and fiction books and then 50 non-fiction books. Now I'm somebody who doesn't read all that much non-fiction, so I, I really look to guidance for lists like this to um, find out what uh, good nonfiction I should be reading. So um, so let me know if you've read any of, of these. Um, I've read a couple, but uh, but yeah, let me know if you've um, read through any more. So, I mean, I think this is a list where it's it's not so much beach reads they're recommending, but, but uh, good, you know, recent books to take on holiday. Like, I don't know what a Beach read would mean anyway, uh, but um, but I, I you know I did make a video um, last summer talking all about this this uh, novel Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller, um, which I think of as my perfect summer read because uh, it like encompasses the whole atmosphere and mood of the summer taking place on this rural English estate, but has a really gripping tale as well. Um, so I'll put a link to um, to my my video of that um, if you're interested in hearing more about this great novel. Uh, but then, um, but yeah, I'll put a link below to the Times article so you can see the descriptions of all the books as well as my, my going through them in, in this, uh, this video. But I'll put up on the side here uh, the list as I'm going through it, talking through all these books so you can look through it and, and um, see if you've read any or ones that um, you might be interested in. So going through this list of 100 books, I've only read 16 of them. Um, so, you know, there's quite a few that I haven't got to yet, but, um, but some, you know, I would totally recommend as well because they're, they're my favorites as well. So starting, um, and they've also gone sort of um, broken them down into categories, which is kind of interesting. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about some of the categories that they've used, but, um, but I think it's interesting that they've tried to divide it into sort of interests in this way. So starting off at the top in the best fiction, um, they, they start off with literary. And um, there, there's several books that they talk about here. Um, the first being uh, Machines Like Me by Ian McEwan, which is his sort of alternative history of um, if, if uh, Britain had lost the Falklands War and history had gone off in a different direction and how um, machines are, it takes place in this, this time when machines are sort of taking over all of our jobs. And one of the machines even starts betting um, the main character's wife. Um, so I have to admit that I, somebody who's gone off Ian McEwen a bit over the years when I first went to university and, and when um, early on in my life I, I read a lot of his books really excitedly and but just over the years I just haven't connected with them so much and and uh, so yeah I don't really read Ian McEwen any mu much anymore and I haven't read this so let me know if you think it's good and if I should read it. Um, 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Elif Shafak. Um, this is a novel I really want to read. I, I'd read her previous novel that she'd written before this. Um, she's written several novels, but I really enjoyed that novel. And um, yeah, and this sounds like, um, has a really uh, fascinating, gripping plot. So it's narrated from the perspective of a dying woman, which sounds quite grim, but, um, but it describes her life, how she fled a, a life of oppression in rural Turkey to live in Istanbul and, and make a new life for herself. So yeah, I'd really like to read this. Um, Late in the Day by Tessa Hadley. This is a novel, um, well, I've, I've never read anything by Tessa Hadley before, but I, I do want, I've always wanted to read something by her. And they, they sort of speculate that maybe she's not as well known as she should be because she writes about the lives of the affluent um, middle class. Um, I don't know if that's true so much. I mean, it might be one of the factors of why Tessa Hadley isn't a better known novelist, but you know, there's Alan Hollinghurst who writes about the, the affluent middle class quite a lot. And, um, you know, and he, he's done quite well for himself winning the Booker Prize and, and all of that. Um, Kudos by Rachel Cusk. I've, I've not read this. I've only read Outline by Rachel Cusk. And I enjoyed it. I think it's, it's really interesting. But 
something that I find a bit grating is how Rachel Cusk is sort of hailed as this, this great voice of um, revolutionizing the novel and that everybody should be following in her footsteps, which I don't totally agree with. I mean, I think she's of a certain writing movement at the moment, but, you know, it's not everything. And I've, so I've, I've sort of found myself like in almost opposition to her when really I, I enjoyed Outline and, and would like to read more of her books, but, um, but just haven't got around to them yet. And so, yeah, um, I would like to read Kudos. Um, I've not read The Only Story by Julian Barnes. I'd really like to. I think he's, he's a great writer. That's, you know, this sort of classic British writer now of, you know, of modern classic of, of the... Um, of the, the current wave of generation of writers that, that sort of came into prominence in the 80s and 90s and is still going. And, um, and I find his book still really fascinating and, and great. So I do want to read this. Um, the first book I have read that I'd really recommend is Sarah Moss's Ghost Wall. Now, this is um, long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction, didn't make it to the shortlist. And, um, and yeah, a lot of people love this novel already. And I would recommend it as a great summer read because it's quite like short and punchy and good and um, really political and meaningful as, as um, well as being a, a gripping story. Um, so it's, it's about a, um, a, a, a daughter of a family that goes on this sort of living archaeological experiment out in the woods where they pretend to be people from, um, the, um, from hundreds and hundreds of years ago li trying to live in this, this rural, isolated way and performing rituals in a slightly creepy way um, that... Uh, that of, that have come before and, and yeah, it's uh, how it plays out I think is so gripping and wonderful. So yeah, highly, highly recommend reading Sarah Moss. I, I hope lots more people read her, her work as well. Um, then Property by Lionel Shriver. I, I really enjoy Lionel Shriver's work. Um, she's quite a controversial figure. She says some things sometimes which are a bit dicey, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so these are short stories. Um, and yeah, so I've never read her short stories before. I've only read a few of her novels. Um, so yeah, and, and then another um, novel which did win the Women's Prize this year is An American Marriage by Tyree Jones. And this is a novel I hugely enjoyed, really um, passionate storytelling, mostly to told in the form of letters. And I love epistolary writing um, of a, a couple who, where the husband has been imprisoned um, for being falsely um, accused of a crime and, um, and their gradual separation and focuses much more on the relationship than the sort of legalities of this, this argument and, and issue. Um, and and I, I like how it does that. It focuses on, on that relationship and the personalities of them, you know, rather than the larger issues. I mean, the issues are still there hovering in the background, but they don't sort of take over um, the narrative and the story. So yeah, really enjoyed this. Um, the, the Care by Deborah Mogart. I've never heard of this, um, but yeah, it's apparently about a social comedy um, on aging and infidelity and, and family secrets. So I think that sounds really interesting. Now, next novel, Adele by Leila Slamini. Um, I think this was her first novel that she wrote and was published in France, but it was actually her second novel that was translated and published into English. And I, I sort of feel like I, I, um, I enjoyed this book, if that's the word for it, because it's quite a dark book um, about the breakdown of a relationship and uh, a woman who has a serial um, infidelity um, issue where she, she just sleeps with a lot of different men, um, cheats on her husband, and, um, and leaves her child in quite perilous situations sometimes to go have these affairs. And I thought it was interesting, but I think there's novels and books that more interestingly explore the contours of desire. I, I much preferred Leila Smini's other book called Lullaby, um, which I think was called The Perfect Nanny in the United States when it was published. Uh, but, you know, that's just my opinion. I know other people really connected with this book. So then the next section um, goes on to humor and talks about Queenie by um, Candice Carty Williams. Um, this this uh, novel that's been getting a lot of praise and interest and talk on, on booktube and, and I've been wanting to read it because um, yeah it sounds really good. I mean it's it's um I feel, find it slightly questionable how it's held as um as being a sort of black Bridget Jones diary. I I 
I'm a bit uncomfortable with this trend in, in fiction to neatly describe books, um, package them in a way um, that are about the black experience, um, sort of packaging them for um, white people. So selling this as the black Bridget Jones diary and like, um, and Marlon James novel, um, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, um, calling it the, the um, you know, African Game of Thrones. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but, uh, but you, you, you see what I mean, it, where, yeah, I just, I just find it um, a bit funny how things are being described at this way. But, um, but yeah, this is supposed to be a very um, funny novel as well as about contemporary issues. And so, yeah, I'd really like to read Queenie. Um, Diary of a Somebody, I've not heard of this before, but apparently Brian Bilston is a celebrity Twitter poet, um, so that makes it sound interesting. All Among the Barley by Melissa Harrison. I read her novel that she wrote before this um, and really appreciated it, so I've been wanting to read this. It's about um, fascism in the English countryside in 1933, so yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six um, by Taylor Jenkins Read This is another book which has been getting a lot of attention on booktube and I've been wanting to read it. Um, it was one of Anna James' favorite novels so far this year um, and she was hoping it would be on the listed for the Women's Prize and yeah, I've been really wanting to read it. It's um, based on a on sort of a Fleetwood Mac and creates a sort of fictional band around that and talks about that whole experience and era of American music and um, so yeah, I'd really like to read this. Then it goes on to Epic Adventure um, Love is Blind by William Boyd. I've never read anything by William Boyd. Um, but then uh, another novel I'd really, really recommend is Washington Black by S.A. Adujin. Um, this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year, and I was hoping it would win that prize because I just loved it. So it takes place in Barbados in 1818 and focuses on the, um, the life and point of view of a slave uh, boy who has a very scientific and artistic mind and about his tense friendship with a scientist um, who's the brother of the plantation owner and the, um, the different places he takes him to in the world and that he ventures to himself um, in pursuing his scientific interests. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it is a great adventure novel as well as being this yeah, really creative um, historical novels, so highly, highly recommend it. One of my favorite books of last year. Uh, then it goes on to Now We Shall Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller. I've not read this, but um, but it's it's a captain haunted by the, the trauma of the Napoleonic Wars, um, which sounds really interesting. And I think I've read one or two books by Andrew Miller before and wanted to read more. So, um, so yeah, I'd like to read that. Then it goes on to Gothic. Fiction and and um, I love that they created this category because I love I'm really drawn to gothic fiction and um, and but I've not read most of these books so it's great that there's these suggestions um, things in jars by Jess Kidd I didn't know this was sort of a gothic novel but it's um, set in Victorian England where a detective teams up with a ghost to solve the crime of a missing child. And, and that, that sounds great, really tense. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd really like to, to read this. It's been a book on my shelves that I've been wanting to get to. Um, then it goes on to The Winch Elm by Tana French, um, which is a novel set in Dublin, is apparently reminiscent of Donna Tartt's writing. So um, yeah, and I've really adored Donna Tartt's writing. So yeah, I'd like to read this as well. And then um, Wakenhurst by Michelle uh, Paver. Um, it's about a woman who's spent her entire life in a decaying manner in Suffolk. And, you know, that sounds like everything you want a Gothic novel to be. Um, so I think that sounds fantastic. And um, yeah, I'd really like to, to read that too. Um, then it talks about The Doll Factory by Elizabeth um, Mackenzie. And Sorry, not Mackenzie, McNeil. Uh, I get my Scottish names mixed up. So yeah, Elizabeth McNeil, um, The Doll Factory. Highly recommend this. One of my favorite novels of the year so far. So um, it takes place in the, the, um, the 1800s in London and um, uh, about a, a woman who has artistic interests and her getting wrapped up in the, the, the art world of the time, but also about a man who has a dangerous obsession with her. And, um, and I'm not just saying I, I love this novel so much because it features a pet wombat as one of the characters, but it is one of the reasons that I love this novel so much. And so, um, yeah, I'd highly recommend this, but it's, you know, it's another novel which has been getting uh, a lot of attention. 
Then it goes on to millennial tales. Um, and um, of course, you can't start a category talking about millennial tales without talking about Sally Rooney, who is so much in vogue now. And her novel, Normal People, and her first novel also were conversations with friends, both incredibly popular books. She's been critically hailed, but um, also very popular novelist. And, um, you know, but she has her detractors as well. But I'm one of her supporters. I think her fiction is, is great, really fascinating new style of writing. I mean, it's, that draws upon old styles of writing. And, um, and this novel about a relationship between a boy and a girl, it's basically um, a romance novel, but um, one which is really clever and interesting looking at modern life of this couple who move from rural Ireland to Dublin um, to um, pursue lives in university and about all the, the, um, the highs and the pitfalls of their relationship and um, they come from different socioeconomic groups and so it talks about that whole tension and and uh, yeah I think it's a it's a really great gripping novel and yeah it would be a great summer read um, so yeah then it goes on to my sister the serial killer um, which uh, was also um, shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction a novel I hugely enjoyed um, all, all set in uh, Lagos and and is about a um, sister who's covering up the murders that her um, her sister commits and um, her, her much more beautiful sister. So it's about the tension of their relationship, but also the, the, um, the practicalities of trying to cover up these crimes and the moral issues around these crimes and, and uh, about the backstory of why they, um, the, the sister has been committing them. And, and uh, yeah, I, it's a great tense novel, um, really clever and engaging and wonderful and would, yeah, again, be a great summer read. Um, then uh, he goes on to The Pisces by Melissa Broder, um, which was long listed for the Women's Prize this year. Um, a lot of books on the, the Women's Prize this year. And, uh, and yeah, but this is a very divisive novel, but one that I happen to love about a wo woman who's um, having a lot of complicated relationship issues where she breaks up with her, her boyfriend, who she doesn't even really like that much, but, um, but then goes on a bit of a rampage and sort of semi-stalks him. And, and um, yeah, so it needs to retreat to... Um, her sister's house, her sister's very luxuriant house, um, to try to find herself. And yeah, so it's a very like satirical type novel, um, but sort of punching fun at modern life. But, um, but some people find it a bit grating how it explores uh, love and passion in relationships and, and the way um, it, it, it uh, looks at women, um, some people have really um, objected to, to but, um, but I, I found it really fascinating and, and funny as well as engaging and moving, you know, it can, do both of those things at the same time. So yeah, I'm um, sort of interested in having a category about millennials. And um, then it goes on to debut novels and another one of my favorite books from last year's um, at the top of the list is Swan Song by Kelly Greenberg, Jeff Cott. Um, I just love this novel so much. It's quite a thick novel that you can really get um, engrossed in because it's, um, it's, it's very gossipy as well as being um, really meaningful talking about um, friendship and um, literary relationships and the meaning of celebrity and ambition all centered around the, the story of Truman Capote and the woman that he sort of uh, betrayed by writing about their private lives in what was going to be his last epic novel but was never actually finished. And this um, for uh, just handy reasons has just been published in paperback in the UK so you know handy to get that but you can also get it through book depository um, as a paperback so yeah would really really recommend this great novel uh, then um, it goes under golden child by claire adam um, which is a novel i really enjoyed and which also just won the desmond elliott prize for debut fiction and um, as a novel that's been championed by Sarah Jessica Parker and published in America under her imprint. And so uh, yeah, and a um, really good story about problematic sibling relationship and one who's sort of a favored son and one who's a less favored son. And the really tense story about when one of them becomes kidnapped and the father goes on a quest to try to recover his child. And, and um, yeah, I. I, yeah, it's a great gripping story. Yeah, it would be another great summer read because you want for, I think, when you're on a holiday, you want a really gripping tale that will that you can get stuck into, um, but, um, but, um, but which also makes you think a bit, or at least hopefully makes you think a bit. So um, yeah, really highly recommend that. And uh, then for debut 
novels. Um, I've not read these other two books, Devoured and The Farm, so don't really know much about them. Then it goes on to classic reboots. And um, of course, there's been a lot of classic reboots um, lately, and some people feel like it's been, been overdone a bit. Um, but two um, novels, which were both um, shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. Yes, we're coming back to the Women's Prize for Fiction. And uh, there's Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, um, retelling the, the story of a woman who is taken prisoner and um, made into the trophy wife of Achilles after he sacks her country. And she's um, a member of the royalty of this country, a princess. And, and, um, and it follows her life, but also goes into Achilles' perspective and his complicated relationship. So it, um, I think she tries to balance talking about the, the, the woman's story and the woman's perspective with this exploration of masculinity at the time and Achilles' perspective. And, and it's more sold as, you know, talking about the, the silence of the girls and the, the women's lives, but it, you know, it really goes into both of their lives and, and you, you know, and that's something that not everyone has responded to, um, but I, I thought it was really fascinating and interesting um, despite, you know, these slight problems with it. Um, the novel that I loved much more um, is Circe by Madeline Miller and, and you know, this such a brilliant, gripping novel um, about the story of a nymph, you know, who's most famous um, for living on an island and turning, when Odysseus lands on that island, um, she turns a number of his sailors into pigs. And, um, and it goes into her backstory, the whole story of her life, living through multiple centuries and um, her complicated relationship, her development as a, as a witch, developing magical powers, um, but also the complicated politics of being a nymph, um, sort of living in between the lands of the gods and the mortals, and her struggles as a woman trying to you know, <laughs> find her, her place in the world and people that she can really connect to and rely upon. And, and uh, yeah, I just thought it was a wonderful, sweeping tale. I'm really surprised that um, they didn't include on this list another new novel, which is called A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, um, which is another one of Anna Jane's favorite books of the year that she talked about a lot. And, and a lot more people have been talking about this recently, saying it's um, yeah, a much more fascinating retelling of a Greek, Greek mythology. Um, but, um, but I've not read it yet, and, but I, one I really want to read. So then it goes into a category of historical fiction, and I wish I'd read more of these. I really enjoy historical fiction, but I've only read uh, The Lawn Take by Robin Robertson, and this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize last year, and it won the Goldsmiths Prize, and I think it won another book prize this year. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's a really fascinating tale about a Canadian who is, after World War II, he really suffers from the trauma of that experience, and he moves to America to become a journalist and feels like he can't return home because he's, um, he's just, he's changed, the war has changed him so much, so even though there's a home waiting for him to go back to in Canada, he feels like he can't go back there, and he, he becomes a journalist in America, traveling through um, different communities, reporting on the lives of people who are dispossessed and, and who don't have a voice. Um, but it's told in this really interesting poetic way. The, the author is mainly a poet. And um, yeah, and I thought it was such a fascinating style and uh, a really gripping and moving story as well, really beautifully told. That also like goes into the cinematic history of that, that time period and looking at a sort of alternate to that, um, that cinematic history, um, what that cinematic history presents. Um, and it actually shows them going through the sets of sort of movies of that time. And yeah, really fascinating book. Um, but yeah, I've not really read any of these other um, historical fiction novels, although except, um, uh, how could I forget, another one that I've read on this list, and another is my favorite. One of my favorite books that I've read so far this year is We'll Be Safe Here by Damien Barr. And uh, yeah, I um, love this novel so much. It's sort of a dual tale, looking at opposite ends of the century in South Africa and looking at these um, institutions, camps which have been created, which are meant to protect the people inside them, but actually harms them and destroys their identity. And, and uh, yeah, such a beautiful, moving novel. And he's, he's written a memoir before, um, but this is his first proper novel. And it's so artfully told, really well told, um, really meaningful. So yeah, highly recommend this. But, um, but I've not read any of these other historical novels on the list. So if you've read any and recommend them, um, please 
um, let me know because, yeah, I'd like to know if I should read them. Um, then it also talks about thrillers on the list, and I just don't read many thrillers at all. Um, I'd like to know if there's some good quality thrillers that I should read, so um, let me know if you recommend any from either Lists List or any other recent ones you've read recently that you'd really highly recommend. And next in fiction it goes into crime novels, and um, yeah, and I don't really read any crime novels generally, so again, you know, if you suggest any from these this list, um, let me know. Although one that I've had my eye on is um, Tangerine by Christine Mangan, which is one that I sort of picked out, which I thought just sounded really interesting about a um, relationship and how the the female of the relationship, she had a strong friendship with another woman who comes to visit them and the the, um, the friend sort of intrudes upon their relationship. I just think sounds really interesting and that I've been wanting to read. Also, there's a novel by Kate Atkinson called Big Sky, and this brings back, I think, a character of hers that she's written about before, but I've, I've only read one novel by Kate Atkinson, which is called uh, something, something About Gods in the title. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but I, I really enjoyed it. It made me want to read more of her fiction, but she's written so many books that um, I sort of almost don't know where to start next. And so, um, so yeah, if you're a fan of this, this series of hers that uses this character, um, let me know. Let me know if I should read these books um, or if you recommend any of these other crime novels. So then it gets into the best nonfiction. And these, this is a category I'm much less familiar with, even though I talked about recently how I've been reading a lot more autobiographical books and memoirs. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to read more. And, and you know, and history is just a category I never read, even though my, my father mainly reads history books. And so I try to get some good suggestions from him sometimes. But, um, but yeah, I just really don't read much history at all. Um, so yeah, I haven't read any of these. And the only memoir on the list I've read is Becoming by Michelle Obama, which I loved so much. It's incredible, incredible memoir. I made a whole video gushing about how much I loved the experience of it. And yeah, it's just such a great memoir. And you know, I was lucky enough to see Michelle Obama in conversation with Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie at the end of last year. And that was such a brilliant talk. So wonderful to see them meet and and their admiration for each other and yeah and just so fascinating hearing Michelle's story of growing up in Chicago and her development of her political life and her her working life and and her you know her uneven journey um because she started out as a lawyer and then realized that this wasn't something for her and and the bravery it took to decide she wasn't going to be a lawyer anymore and pursue another career path and working on charities and and um yeah and but then also obviously the whole her whole relationship with Barack and and the the crazy journey of living in the White House and 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 becoming a political force in her own right and uh yeah just wonderful wonderful memoir um, so, but yeah, I've not read any of these other memoirs. I want to read Rose Tremaine's memoir because I've read some of Rose Tremaine's novels and, and love her writing and so would yeah, like to know more about her own experience and upbringing and how she articulates that. But uh, yeah, not many read any of these other ones. Then it goes into health and medicine and war. And these are categories I've not read any of these books from and don't normally read any of these categories. Although I have the, the book War Doctor, which sounds really fascinating, really pressing story um, about a doctor who, who works in these really dangerous war zones and, um, and his experiences there and so sort of talking about life on the front in that way. And, uh, and, but yeah, I've not read any of these other ones, so let me know if you've read any of these and would particularly recommend them. Then it goes into self-help and the law and entertainment and literary and the environment and, and these are all categories which they recommend a, a few or, or two um, books from each but I've not read any of them. Yeah I've been intrigued by the look of How to Fail by Elizabeth Day. I think that sounds interesting. It's interesting with the literary category where it feels like these are books that you would only really read if you had a specialist interest in these authors and this these literary subjects but maybe not. Maybe maybe it would like sort of get you into the the the, the poetry of Col Coleridge or yeah the um this this other subject of the the lost life and scandalous death of Letitia Elizabeth Landon um who I've never heard of before but um but uh, but yeah it's apparently the female Byron so 
Um, yeah, interesting, but, um, but yeah, not read them. Um, and I do have the book Underland by Robert McFarlane. I saw him talk about this book recently at the South Bank Center, and it sounded really moving and interesting how, you know, he's this incredibly popular writer who explores these, these shifting landscapes of the environment, um, but also the environment that's becoming lost, but also the lost language that we have to describe them. And, and he, he talks about this um, in this book, traveling into some of these landscapes and exploring them himself, but also people who are intimately connected with these landscapes. And, um, and yeah, so I'd really like to, to read this. Um, then it goes into business and economics, which I never read any from, and also current affairs. And I just, yeah, just generally don't read books from these, these categories. Though, um, if you think any of these books are really extraordinary and that I should read them, yeah, again, let me know. And science is a category I'd read, like to read much more of. I, I think a lot of scientific books sound so fascinating and interesting. Um, Carlo Rovelli, I have a couple of his books and been wanting to, to read him. Um, I know he's a very popular science writer, um, but I've just never got around to reading him. And James Lovelock is a, a writer in his 90s, but he's still publishing and he's written about the environment. I think I have read a book of his before. He's written about the, the environment for so many decades. And, and so, yeah, it's really interesting that he's still exploring issues to do with the environment and, and, and um, how that's been handled today. And, and this is um, a bit of a secret. I'm a bit of an um, a outer space geek. I, I, um, I love watching programs about outer space. So I've been wanting to read more books about outer space. So there's um, this, this book, The Moon, um, A History for the Future by Oliver Morton. I would write, really like to read this book um, because yeah, I've been watching the new series, The, the Planets, narrated by Brian Cox and exploring all the different planets in our solar system. And it's the most beautiful, perfect program. I love it. And I also saw the documentary Apollo 11 recently, um, which is really good taking you through that whole first mission to the moon and, but in a really intimate way, exploring that. And yeah, I, I thought that was a fantastic documentary, but yeah, the series, The Planets, I, it's on net, um, no, it's on the BBC in the UK. I don't know if it's been in America or other countries yet. So, um, but if you see it, watch it, because I think it's brilliant. Um, so, um, yeah, I would like to read this book, The Moon. Then um, Humor, it suggests a couple books. And one of them I have read, Calypso by David Sedaris. And David Sedaris is um, a favorite author of my partners. And, and I read, I read um, all of these. I mean, it's sort of memoir, um, sort of memoir slash essay stories, but, but you know, he has such a, a funny sense of humor, a really slanted, dark, twisted way of looking at the world. And I read all these aloud to my partner and, you know, we were just laughing aloud reading them. And, but this, um, this book, I think even for him, it gets much darker. It's looking much more at mortality and the passing of his, one of his sisters committed suicide. And then his father, who's a very advanced age, but still looks at it, you know, surprisingly in quite a, a funny, humorous way. And so, yeah, I, I just think he's fascinating and, and um, yeah, really, really funny and punchy and humorous. Um, so, um, but yeah, I've not read the, the other book, Woke. So, um, so if you've read it, let me know if, uh, if I should. So those are the books on the list. I've gone on longer than I thought I would, but, um, but yeah, let me know um, how many of these you've read, um, which ones you would recommend or, or which ones you're most interested in reading now. And yeah, and if you have any good suggestions from me from this list or other good summer books that you would recommend to me, let me know in the comments below and we can have a good old chat about them. So uh, hope your summer is going well. And uh, you know, I prefer to stay cool and stay in the shade to do my reading. But you know, some people like to sit on their sun loungers in direct sunlight um, while reading. I don't know how you can do that getting all sweaty and, um, you know, it just fries my mind when I do that. But, uh, but you know, it works for some people. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, let me know what you're reading this summer and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye everyone.